Thank you guys for that. We are truly blessed by your gift. Thank you. All right. So today, we are continuing our, maybe, we're continuing our talk on um, the practice of metaphysics. You're getting lots of loves here, obviously. Practical metaphysics. And today's title is The Will of God. But it's really about the grace and the will of God. So what is it? Thy will be done, our will be done. How do we as individuals walk our spiritual journey Living our spiritual talk, creating beautiful music, stepping up in times of need, how do we embrace and live the grace of life? There was a question posted by our new executive director, Shed Roblin, on Unity's Ministers page. I don't know if I'm supposed to share this or not, but I'm going to. Because it's a private page, and it's just for ministers. And it, the question, I think, went something like this, and I'm, not, I'm just paraphrasing here. Is unity a, a Christian church? Or are we something else? The majority say, yeah, we have Christian traditions. And what does that mean? What does that really mean? What does it mean to each of us? Because a unity here in, in Louisville, where I grew up, yeah, I was always taught that I was a Christian. And at the same time, I was taught that there is good in other traditional religions also. That really, it's all the same, just a little bit different interpretation based on the culture that people are in, on the customs that people have. And so then, when we let our ego block us from our good, are we living God's will? And if you don't like the word God, Change it to whatever you choose your greater spirit to be. I typically like the word spirit, but since I'm really talking about a, a Christian thought process here, the will of God, I thought I would use the word today. But you can change it to whatever you want. Many in the Christian tradition believe that that will be done is really about living a life of suffering and sorrow and poverty, loneliness and death, right? And that we live to die and we have to be saved before we die. Well, that is not what I believe. And it's okay if you guys believe that. But I believe that thy will be done means that I am here to live life out loud, disruptive, <laughs> managing the chaos the best that I can. Because we live in a cosmos of chaos. And, and we have stuff coming through us and at us all the time, right? And sometimes, yeah, we have to go to that ego mind and say, okay, what am I going to do with this? You know, somebody will say something to you or somebody will maybe do something that 
you feel um, put upon by, right? It happens. And is that God's will? No, it's not. And if you take it on, then you're responsible for it. Because that's your will, not God's will. So don't take it on. The universal expression is God is. It's not a person, it's not an entity that's pulling strings or a puppet. It just exists. And it exists as good. And I know that because the truth that Jesus taught, and I got this from an Emily Cady writing, a little booklet that's called The Will of God. It's from like 1928, or something like that. Um, it's what, and what she says is, God taught us what man is, is there of you who if his son asks him for a loaf, will give him a stone, right? Or if he shall ask for a fish, he will give him a serpent. If you think being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how many, how may much more shall your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask? So, whatever we give out in the world is what's going to come back at us, whether it's in this lifetime or in another lifetime, which is why I don't believe in death. This physical body may transform, but the soul is of and that omnipresence of spirit. It can never die. And it is only good. The evil comes in our era of thinking, right? So it comes through our own thought process and our own beliefs. So what do you believe? I believe we are made full. And by that I mean that we receive all the fullness of life when we are born in, into this world. We have the fullness of love. There is no death. We have the fullness of life. There is no sickness. We have the fullness of power. There is no authority greater than us. We have that fullness of joy. There is no sorrow. We have that fullness of good. There is no evil. There is no error thinking. Unless we think there is. And that's where we get in trouble is that second dimension. So we are the spiritual self, the fullness of life, the fullness of love, the fullness of power, the fullness of joy, that fullness of all good. But we have a human side that buys into the other, the darkness, the sickness, the death. Why? Because sometime, a long time ago, somebody wanted power, and they changed the teachings. They interpreted it the way that they could cre create control. And we believed it. Because back then, you know, there weren't a lot of books around, and people, we believed what people told us, right? But that's not the truth anymore. And we know it's not true because of all the findings of other books, ancient books, that came before the writings of the Bible. Or at least at the same time. So, what does that really mean for humanity? What does it mean for you and for me? 
Because that's what it really boils down to. What do I believe? And at one point in my life, I believed in sickness. And there are times when, yeah, my physical body is kind of like in pain today because my thought process, for some reason, is out of balance. And your song talked about being in balance. And that is the truth. We have to balance ourselves in the good and the error of thinking, our evil thinking. We have to balance and walk through life, through that journey, as the love, with the wisdom of the universe. And all the knowledge is out here in the ethers. We just got to tap into it. We have to be responsible. Uh oh, here I go. <laughs> we have to be responsible for ourselves. You know, when my kids were growing up, I would tell them, check your drama at the door because your mama don't want it. Right? Be responsible for yourself. You make choices. There are consequences. Sometimes they're great consequences. And sometimes they're not. And when they're not, own up to it. Don't be a victim and put it out on somebody else. Or if you don't like what somebody else does, don't try to make them wrong. Look at your own stuff. I have to look at mine every day. I was taught as a child to look at my stuff every day. There are days when I forget. Sometimes I'm tired. And yet, when I'm aware of what I might have said or what I might have done, then I have to forgive myself. I have to be responsible for me. I cannot be responsible for everybody else in the universe and all their stuff. Sorry, it don't work that way. There's nobody responsible but you. And that's really the will of God. We have free will. There's nobody pulling the straight strings. If you want to be evil, be evil. But I'm not to. Right? If you want to be a victim, then be a victim. But I'm not to. And if you want to do good and be good and live in a world with peace within yourself, creating peace outward, then take accountability for your own stuff. Dig deep and move forward, because that's what it takes. So, I love today's daily word because it went right along with this today. You know, what is your will? How are you living in this moment right now? Because guess what? This moment is the only moment that matters. What happened yesterday is gone. You cannot change it. You cannot do anything about it. So, look at it. Heal it. Forgive yourself is the only way to heal it and move on. So if you need to journal, if you need to talk with someone, whatever it is you need to do to purge it from your mind, from your being, so that it does not dig in deeper and cause dis-ease in the body, right? Because in unity, what we teach is that our thoughts create the blocks which create the disease in our body. Now, Sometimes we brought up from way back there, right? 200 years ago, we did something, and now we're going to clean it up. So it's going to show up in this body. Okay. Clean it up. Look at it. Breathe through it. Expand the pain out of the body. Expand. Expand the thought out of the body. And even if the physical disease takes hold until you leave this planet, 
Continue to expand it outward so that the next time you come back in to the physical incarnation, you do not bring it with you. You know, in unity, I was taught to look at where, where's the fear? And I really didn't go through life with a lot of fear. And it took me by surprise when there was one walking my dog, Victor, 90 pounds. We were walking down the street, we did it every day. I was actually walking over my sisters so we could walk our dogs together. And around the corner from my sisters and moms come the two pit bulls. And so they rounded the corner, and I was on the opposite side of the street with my dog. And there was a lady with a little two year old on their side of the street. The two pit bulls crossed the street and attacked, tried to attack me. And my dog stood between them and me and stood his ground. The little girl, the, the lady with the little boy, she grabbed him up and she ran. And thank God she did because she was no bigger than this. And the little one, Patton, wasn't about two. And those two dogs would have came at them and have been not pretty. My dog got a hundred puncture wounds. Now here's this 90 pound dog. I cannot carry him. Bleeding all over. Because some lady came and she got between, she got her car and started hollering at her and beeping her horn. And then she got between me and the dogs. And she got him to move across the street. So she followed me back home. And here's this dog. Just by sheer will, walking down the street, and then I had to get him into the car and get him to the bed. And because of the unconditional love that this dog had always been to me, because when he was a puppy, yeah, I'll probably cry. When he was a puppy, I was very ill. And this puppy, now y'all know how to act when puppies are. This puppy would lay beside me when I would get paralyzing headaches and could not move for hours every day, for weeks and months. And that unconditional love that attachment that we had with each other as that one was unbroken. And he survived. You know, they did him all his wounds and we took care of him and he stayed in the hospital for a few days. And, but, you know, he lived to be about 18. So, there's good. And it was better that we were attacked than that lady and her baby. Because I don't know that that baby would have survived. And that was, that was the will of the day. That was the universe looking out for the best in the situation. That was not good. And I, and I started talking about this because of fear. When I went through ministerial school, after my illness, and I started to get better, I went back to my roots. Because every day I was going to the doctor, and some of you have heard the story, so I'm not going to get into it. But I just started showing up in unity every day, because that was my roots. And if I could be here in prayer, and I'd sometimes I'd just come and sit, it would get me out. It would get me in that space. And it started my healing process. And I started back doing my yoga here on Wednesday nights. And just slowly, slowly coming back into classes and things like that. And I was able to heal myself. I let go of that which was no longer working for me and began to heal. When I was in ministerial school, they asked me, well, what is it that you fear? And I had to really think about it. Because I didn't fear a whole lot. 
And I looked at her and said, you know, I fear loose dogs on the street. I noticed that anytime I saw a loose dog on the street, my heart would race. And I would get into that little bit of anxiety. And so I had to work through that. And it took a long time. I can now see a loose dog on the street and my heart doesn't panic. But I also, when we got a new dog, I told my husband, I said, you know, I have to have one that I can pick up. You know, if I walk the dog and something comes along, I want to be able to pick up my dog and hold it. And so we do. We have a beautiful little Cavachon. She's full of life and love. But that was something that really took hold of me, that fear, and I had to move through it and let go of it. And I've done that. Because it was part of my journey to see what fear was really about. Because, you know, when you grow up in a unique community and there's not a whole lot to fear, the world, need, you need to see fear, right? And so that's how I encountered that fear. And I know that it's good, and it's only good, and that is the way to peace. There's a quote that I ran across this week by Emerson. And in this book that Jesus Mysteries talks about um, the yogis, and I mentioned yoga a few minutes ago, that was one way I lived through my fear. The universe is represented by every one of its particles. Everything is made of one hidden stuff. The world globes itself in a drop of dew. The true, true doctrine of omnipresence is that God appears with all his parts in every pulse and cobwebs. I and the Father are one, is what Jesus taught us. There is God in every instant. There is God in every encounter. There is good in every encounter. We have to look for it. We have to dig deep sometimes and realize that, yes, this is my journey. And I am not victim. I am not fearful. I am here to live out boldly my life. And yes, I may judge some things. I am not perfect. But I am alive. I am the fullness of good. That's the great life. That's our inheritance. Is that fullness of life. That is the will, our inheritance, a great life, a good life. So as we let go of those negative thoughts that dis-ease in the body, and we meet it fairly and squarely, in the moment, without fear or hesitation, we can walk through life, full out, singing, praising, and you know, sometimes digging in deep. But it's all good. And humankind will prosper and grow as each of us prosper and grow, living the abundance that we truly are. And so it is.